Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, just out for a walk here in the woods. My little friend Bradley over here, the four-legged monster. And uh, doing a video just to kind of cap off some things that I've been working on over the last six months, well, really a year. And what I wanted to talk about today was um, the notion of the perennial tradition in a sense of spirituality, primarily. Um, so, if you're not sure what the perennial tradition is, there's lots of videos out there. For some, it can be a little bit unclear. Basically, the notion of perennialism in the spiritual sense is that when you look into the world's spiritual traditions, religious traditions, um, if you look at it, as Joseph Campbell said, uh, through the metaphors of teaching in the various traditions without getting stuck to the various metaphors. In other words, um, taking as hard and fast literal truth that certain mythological and, and uh, you know, aspects of uh, spirituality are literally true. You'll see that there is a, an underlying truth to a particular event that's communicated in a mythological story or in a particular belief that comes out in a spiritual tradition that is shared amongst many, if not all, of the world's spiritual religious traditions. And that truth is um, Aldous Huxley. Well, actually, uh, it wasn't Aldous Huxley. It was uh, Shaw that said, George Bernard Shaw that said, there's only one religion, but it's communicated in a thousand different languages, something to that effect. And that's effectively what perennialism, that's a good intro to perennial tradition, is that there is a, there's a sense that there is a, there are certain kernels of universal truth that are out there that have been discovered by the world's spiritual traditions, mainly in a contemplative sense, as opposed to a legalistic, moralistic sense. Because when you get into the legal and moralism of religion, you get into definites and absolutes and you get really stuck to particular stories that in thinking they, you know, they necessarily literally happened or that even if they did literally happen, there's, um, <clears throat> they're disconnected from larger spiritual realities. And perennialism says, no, no, those spiritual truths are existent throughout many of the world's religious traditions. They're communicated, though, in different languages in the sense of different histories, different cultures, different um, ways of understanding the world, different psychologies unique to those cultures. And when you look at through the contemplative mind or the mystic eye, mind, you could say, in the various world's religions and spiritual traditions, you'll see that there, those common elements are there. Meaning that there is actually a universal perspective on spiritual reality. Many connect this, these kernels um, to, you know, what some call God or, you know, a divine force or uh, oneness. Richard Rohr talks about, you know, the universal Christ and talks about a, a transcendent um, but deeply imminent perspective of God. Um, but not in the sense of a being, right? Not in the sense of a, you know, an old man, white, old white man sitting on a throne, as Richard Rohr says, but more the ground of being rather than a being. So uh, being, not a being, but being itself, right? And that underlies and pervades in different groups, you know, and traditions will, that look at perennialism, will see, will argue whether, you know, everything is God or whether God is simply, you know, pervades everything or unfolds in everything or unfolds everything that is the ground of everything that has unfolded. But the common feature is more or less that this universal source of all these spiritual truths and, and of all that is, is a unitive force, meaning everything is connected in one way or another. You know, you get into some of the Buddhist schools that, you know, talk about, um, um, universal versus uh, uh, relative, right? So ultimate oneness, everything is 
is one and the same thing, even though relatively um, different. So the example that often gets used is waves on an ocean, right? A wave is a, a relative entity in the world, but is still only part of the ocean. It's still part of the water. So when the wave collapses, it's simply just the water that everything else on the ocean is, right? And so you get some of those very hard, unitive, uh, interbeing sort of approaches. And then you get into some unitive perspectives that say, yes, everything is all connected through having been created through that ground of being, the divine DNA um, that established everything. And there's a little bit more of a room for, um, uh, within that unitive perspective, that connected perspective, uh, a bit of individualism that's that's in there. So you do in in traditions that would attach to the perennial traditions. Again, it's about language. It's about how you how the psychology and the the way that they see the world, the language that is used. And language is a big one in perennialism because um, most languages don't fully translate well into into others. So let me give you an example. In Greek, in ancient Greek, um, biblical Greek, for those of you that are sort of of the Christian ilk, um, there is probably about 50 different words for love uh, that, that are different expressions and different meanings of that singular term love that we use commonly in English. And when you have that, um, you can't often communicate it well because if there's no corresponding word in a particular language to what is being referred to in another language, you get into trouble in terms of translation and you get into trouble in terms of understanding what is meant. But uh, yeah, so it's good to see that, you know, individual expressions of the universal spiritual truths, the unitive aspect, the divine aspect, and really just, just truth um, those kernels of, of universal understanding, um, just to realize it may not be exactly corresponding to what one is talking about in their tradition, but they're probably talking about the same sort of general idea, uh, at least if not the same idea, it's just expressed differently. Um, the metaphors are different and the, and the mythology may be different to help people in those particular cultures distill and understand what it is that is, is being communicated. And that's another aspect of perennialism is that although, you know, there are certain truths to be discovered, often it's not by words, it's by what, by experience, right? So that's where the contemplative aspect comes into this, is that there are some things that cannot be communicated by words, only by experience and understanding. And that's, uh, that is a great gift of the contemplatives and the mystics is that they see see that which is incommunicable or largely incommunicable. And when one mystic from one tradition or a contemplative from one tradition meets a contemplative from another tradition, they don't necessarily have to suss it out and clarify endlessly what they mean by their terms. They just kind of know. They recognize that universal truth expressed in different ways through the various traditions of the world just by having experienced or having a touch of that experience. So perennialism is a, is a big deal for me. It has been really for a long time. You know, um, I studied a lot of the Catholic mystics and Catholic spiritual theology and then Zen Buddhism. And there's so much more there than for commonality than people allow, because again, as, as uh, Joseph Campbell said, people get stuck to the individual metaphors of their own tradition, so much so that they can't see that if you hold that loosely and allow the metaphors of another tradition that is communicating essentially the same truth to come true, come through, that uh, there's, a, there's a touchstone there. may not be exactly the same understanding, and that's fine, it doesn't need to be, but there's enough ground for that commonality to understand that there is a unifying truth that underlies both traditions that maybe both of them don't understand fully. And that's okay. It's good. That's okay. It's a good thing to have because we will never understand 
the cosmic mystery, mysteries as they are laid out. And that's an aspect of perennialism too. You do the best you can with what you got where you are, with the language, history, and psychology that you've got to express that inexpressible aspect. And to recognize that the unexpressible aspect is most manifest everywhere at once. So you could call it God. You could call it the divine force. Richard, Richard Rohrer calls it a ton of stuff. The flow of the universe, right? More uh, a verb than a noun, um, he says. It's more of a more of an action than a thing. The ground of the ground of being, as opposed to individual beings themselves. So that's my introduction to my brief understanding of perennialism. There are some great teachers on this subject. I mentioned Richard Rohr, Joseph Campbell to an extent, certainly Ken Wilber recently. Aldous Huxley wrote a book called The Perennial Philosophy, which links sort of the spirituality and science, etc. Um, but it, and he often gets credit for having coined it. He didn't. Um, Leibniz talks about this as well. You can go back into the Greeks and they talk about perennialism as well. So while Aldous Huxley may be the, um, the touchstone, touchstone of the modern era for expressing perennialism in modern sense, um, he didn't invent it. Let's just put it that way. Um, he, uh, he drew on the, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. And that's, that's the other thing about perennialism is understanding that it's okay. There are different traditions and expressions. Um, there's no need to get rid of those individual expressions of tradition. Um, just because we don't necessarily identify with them, they still have those kernels of universal truth in them. And those traditions are, are simply expressing them in the best way they know how. So there it is. That's my intro. A little bit longer than I thought. I'm probably going to be coming back with more because I'm developing sort of 10 general precepts for myself on perennialism and my spirituality and how it all fits together. So I'll probably share that eventually. But I wanted to put this out there on this beautiful day.